If you have an EV, this little thing can leave you stranded even if your battery is charged to 100%. Hey everyone, it's a cool day here in Michigan and it's between the holidays so I've got some time to tinker with the cars. And one of the things we tend to forget about in the EV world is that we still have a 12 volt battery. That's right, your main traction battery that runs the car still needs a 12 volt battery to do all of the accessories. So the main function of the 12 volt battery is not to start the car in the sense of a starter and starting an internal combustion engine, but simply to run the electronics and all of the other control functions that you need to run the car. And if that 12 volt battery is dead, you're not going anywhere. So let's take a quick peek where that is on a lot of cars and also how we check it for voltage. This is my 2022 Kia Niro EV. You can always tell the EV version by the charge flap in the front. And as you can see, we have all these things under the hood. Almost looks like a conventional vehicle, except you do see all these orange cables, which are the high voltage cables. You know, we have air conditioning compressors, wiper fluid, but we also have a 12 volt battery. And it's a good idea to check this every now and then because it's still a lead acid battery, which means it has probably about the same failure rate as a normal ICE car starter battery. So we have a, our negative terminal, we have a positive terminal which is protected underneath this little cap so that we don't get any shorts. So that's where we wanna measure this. So I just took my Cheap Harbor Freight voltage meter here, set it to DC volts, and it's reading around 12.2, 12.3 volts, which is about what I would expect when the car is not running because what that means is that right now the battery is not being recharged. Now an EV does not have an alternator. You won't find any belts that are charging this battery, but what it does have is something called a DC to DC converter, which charges the battery from the traction battery to keep the 12 volt battery charged. But right now it's off, the car is off, and this is how you wanna check it. And you wanna look for a voltage of well over 12. Uh, I would say this is slightly marginal, but if you start to get towards like 11.6, 11.7, then definitely your 12 volt battery is starting to go and you're gonna to have to look at replacing this right here. One other thing you can do to make sure that your battery is being charged is to turn the ignition on while you're measuring this and you should see a much higher voltage because now the DC to DC converter is going to be active and charging your 12 volt. So let's do that. All right, I kicked on the car. You can hear some fans running probably for the climate control. And now the voltage is like 14.6, which is about what I would expect. So now the 12 volt is being charged from the DC to DC converter. So let's shut it back off and see where the voltage lands after it shuts off. So it started out over 13, 13.3, 13.2. And you can see it's kind of winding its way down back to some lower level. And that lower level is really what you want to check because that's what's going to determine when the car has been sitting, the telematics have been running, uh, some other small draws from the car are going to run this down a little bit while it's not being charged. And this is the voltage that needs to fire up the computer after the car has been sitting on a cold snowy morning at the airport for two weeks. And if that's too low, you're going to be stranded. Now the only real fix for this is to actually change out the battery. So this is no different than changing out the 12 volt battery on your ICE vehicle. So you go to the car parts store, you go to the dealer, however you normally do it. Remember if you're a do-it-yourself person to get the right group size, pay attention to letters like R. I know on my Nissan LEAF, it was an R, meaning that the terminals were reversed. So if you get that wrong, the cables won't reach. So make sure you get the right one you're going to pay a core charge, which is a deposit, and you'll get that back when you bring the old battery back. Short of that, one of the things you can do is carry one of these jumper packs, and you can also jumper off of another vehicle to get the 12 volt going again. But obviously that's a short-term fix. You wanna get that battery replaced so that you're not stuck. So what about starting a non-EV, starting an ICE car when they're stuck and they need a jump start? I personally would not recommend that from one of these batteries because they're not designed to do that. They are not designed for cold cranking amps. They are designed to run the electronics on this vehicle. 
So in that case, I mean, unless you want to trickle charge their 12 volt battery from your 12 volt battery for a while, but I wouldn't keep it connected while they're cranking the car. Again, one of these jumper packs is the way to go on that or AAA, something like that. So if you have a car like a Tesla, one thing you should know is that the 12 volt battery is fairly buried. It's not that you can't do it yourself, but it's just a little bit more involved. So I would go out on YouTube University and uh, Google how to find that kind of instructions. Um, it's totally doable. Uh, personally, I've always had Tesla do it because they charge like $200, including the battery itself and the labor. So I never bother with it, but it is something that you can do. It's just a little bit more involved than getting at a battery exposed like our Kia Niro. And then there are some vehicles like the Chevy Volt where the battery is not under the hood. So you have to know where to look for it. In this case, it's under the rear hatch. So open that up, take all the stuff out of the back, open up this little floorboard. And underneath here, you can see the access ports. So you can at least check the voltage using these. But uh, if you want to take it out, if you want to actually want to remove the battery, then this whole cover is going to have to come off. But in the meantime, if you want to just check the voltage, there's your positive, which is, has a separate cover. There's your negative, so you can at least check the voltage. One other pointer, if your car is going to be sitting idle for a while and not on a charger, like in a garage or some other place where you do have access to 120 volt outlet, one of the things you can do is put a trickle charger on it. They look something like this. There is a part that plugs into the wall. There's a little box here, and then a couple of clamps that go onto your battery. As you can tell, this is not meant to jumpstart a battery, but it's a float charger. So it's just supposed to maintain the voltage of a battery over time. So this is what it looks like when it's hooked up. Uh, one on the negative terminal, one on the positive terminal. The little box already lights up, and then this end just goes into a regular outlet. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like, and we'll see you next time.